I pledge allegiance to Yahweh Almighty, who has blessed the Constitutional Republic of the United States, and to that republic for which those gorgeous red, white, and blue stars and stripes stand, one nation under our only God Yahweh, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Yes, our Pledge of Allegiance is a little bit different. I've put it in its proper perspective. You know it's been changed before. Under God, never used to be in the Pledge of Allegiance. And Eisenhower inserted it because our school children were being taught to raise their hand in a Hail Hitler type sign. And, and Isaiah decided we probably better get an under God in that. So um, this is not disrespect to my country or to my flag that represents our country. This is putting respect in the proper position. I pledge allegiance to one God, Yahweh, who has allowed me, who has blessed me to live in a constitutional now republic, who is freeing itself from an evil, corrupt system for hundreds of years. And he's given me a flag, a banner, that has red, white, and blue stars and stripes on it. And I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Maybe you don't know that your God's name is Yahweh. Well, may I please inform you, by the way, this is a women's program. I'm instructed to teach, as an aged woman, the younger women. And of course, I get everybody that listens to this. But moms, as keeper of your household, as guard of your household, you need to teach them the truth that the name of our God, Yahweh, has been replaced in the King James Version with errors of Jehovah and Jesus, as well as the uppercase L-O-R-D and uppercase G-O-D. In the complete Jewish Bible and in other Hebrew versions in the English, his name Yahweh has been substituted with uppercase Adonai, uppercase Elohim, and uppercase Hashem. The only place that you can find his name written as it should is the yud heh wau that you'll find in the actual Hebrew script. Who had the right to do that? Who? Maybe did they not want did someone not want um, anyone else, the nations, to know what his name was? Oh, you're not supposed to say his name. I don't find that in the Word. All I find is, um, uh, you shall not take his name in vain. I shall not take his name for nothing. I use his name for something to exhort, to extol. To proclaim the fact that his name has been removed from his word and substituted with titles. And those who removed his name from his word, they have taken his name in vain. They have made his name nothing and made him a mere title. So that they can introduce erroneous errors of the J and the Shua. Because it was Imanu El. El with us. Who is El? God. God with us. Who is God? Yahweh. Yahweh with us. That child born of a virgin had attributes of mighty God and El as El Shaddai, as everlasting Father. There are o- there's only one with those attributes. That's Yahweh Almighty. He is the everlasting Father. He is the El Shaddai. He is the mighty God. He is the Creator. He is the creator of all. If you're human. (laughs) We got, you know, I've been, I hear so much. I've read so much news. I, I, look, I read opposing things, okay? I like to hear both sides of a story. And I parallel everything with what the scripture says. You hear about trust the plan, trust the plan. Well, did you know that that was a socialistic saying in someone who wrote a socialistic communism communistic book somebody i heard somebody read that that they use that plan they use excuse me they use that phrase trust the plan 
Well, every time I hear that phrase, I stop and I just kind of smile and say, Yahweh, this is your plan from the beginning. You have allowed things to happen to bring about your end. Look, Yahweh raises up kings and he sets down kings. Looks like he's raising up clones and setting down clones. He's raising up body doubles and setting down body doubles. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to run a rabbit trail for a minute. You know, there's um, a lot of people saying, you know, I hear the saying, there's a lot of people that's dead that are really alive and a lot of people that are alive that are really dead. <clears throat> there's a man by the name of David Keith Quigley. And he claims to be John F. Kennedy Jr. He's had, um, you know, those kind of forensic things where they check your ears. His ears are the same as the real child, John F. Kennedy Jr. in the White House. He's presently having DNA tests done by a scientist. Um, and um, I've checked it out. I've been listening to him for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I'm watching this because there's somebody going to pay a price for stealing somebody's identity. And it works the same way with our God. You just don't remove God's name from his word. That's identity theft in the spiritual and the natural. So if you've stolen someone's identity, that is evil. You will be judged for that. That is a lie. And all liars have their part where? In the lake of fire. And those that are, uh, sometimes I wonder, I've heard so many stories, well, this one's got five clones and that one's got uh, two clones. <clears throat> and I thought, man, and I prayed in tears. I said, Yahweh Almighty, am I praying for a clone? Am I praying for a body double? Well, Yahweh, I don't care who you use. I know your word is true. And what we're watching is wars and rumors of wars is what we're watching. And we're watching kingdoms being formed. That's what we're watching right now. But know this. We might have a time of peace and safety sometime after these wars and rumors of wars. And it might get pretty ugly. Might get pretty, pretty ugly. But there's going to be a time of peace and safety. And then sudden destruction. And then such tribulation as the world has never known. And then... We know what happens after that. And I'm seeing a lot of um, things getting out of order. And a lot of things being out of a timeline. And we got to stay with Yahweh's timeline. The Look, Yahweh is not the author of confusion. Look, I heard a top general was speaking at some kind of a conference. And he said, the Q movement is a PSYOP. All you Q lovers, Yahweh's word's not a PSYOP. His name is not a PSYOP. We hear the phrase, there's a lot of things that you think you know that are lies and you're watching a movie. Yahweh's word is not a movie. His word is real and it's tangible. Watch out for distractions in lies. Beware. Because we know that the prophet Daniel saw a ten-toed kingdom. And these kingdoms that are being formed, they will eventually give their power to the beast. We cannot ever depend on human beings we cannot cry out to prime minister this or president this or whoever we can't do that in the scripture they cried out to yahweh almighty in fact that was one of the last verses that i read um this is part three of uh, um of a, uh, I did a breakdown on Savior, Redeemer, and first and last, who is Yahweh. He's our God. He's our Elohim. And you find all throughout the scripture, if you're reading a KJV, where they cried out to 
uppercase God, uppercase Lord. Well, that uppercase God and Lord should have read Yahweh, but his name was removed and they inserted this uppercase title. This is wrong. No one had the right to do that. No one. But when they cried, okay, here, here we go. Let's right here. I'm reading from Isaiah 19 and 20. It says it will, from the complete Jewish Bible now, it will be a sign and witness to Yahweh, Zevaot, in the, Zevaot, Yahweh of hosts, in the land of Egypt, so that when they cry out to Yahweh for help because of the oppressors, he will send them a savior to rescue them. He will send them a savior to rescue them. So they cried out to Yahweh in Isaiah 19 and 20. They cried out to Yahweh, cried out. That is articulation. They cried out to Yahweh, Yahweh, help me. You can look all through the Psalms where David is speaking his name. You can find articulation words, speak, say, declare, praise, exalt, exhort. All these are articulation words for speaking his name. Humans have made it a tradition not to speak his name, to hide his name, to conceal his name. All right, let's skip on down here. I was, I was reading different verses that had a Savior in them on the last program. So let's get on down through here. Let's go to Isaiah 43 and 3, again from the complete Jewish Bible. It says, I, yes, I am Yahweh. Beside me there is no deliverer. So this is the complete Jewish Bible. He uses uppercase Adonai. Yes, I am Yahweh. Besides me, there is no Savior. In the King James Version, in the same verse, Isaiah 43 and 11, it says, I, even I am, there's that uppercase L-O-R-D. It should not be that. It should say, I am Yahweh, and beside me, there is no Savior. No Savior. No Savior. There's no Savior. There's no other God. Isaiah 45 and 15 says, complete Jewish Bible, Truly, you are a God who hides himself, God of Israel, Savior. Who is God? Yahweh. They were crying out to Yahweh. Isaiah 45 and 21, Let them stand and present their case. Indeed, let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago, announced it in times gone by? Wasn't it I, Yahweh? There is no other God besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Yahweh is speaking through Isaiah. There's no other Savior besides Yahweh. That means J is not your Savior. Shua is not your Savior. There is no other God beside me. That means Shua is not your God and J is not your God. Yes, Yahweh is our Yeshua. Yes, Yahweh is our salvation. But he was never, ever, ever given a Shua or a J name at birth. That angel was a fulfillment of what Isaiah prophesied of he will be El with us. He will be God with us. By the way, Emmanuel, Emmanu is not connected to El in the Hebrew. It is not. It is a phrase. It is not a name. And you don't have to be a Hebrew scholar. You can just look at the Hebrew script. You can just look and see that El, if you can identify your Hebrew letters, but you can see El is not connected to Emmanu. It's a sentence phrase. It never was a name. Never, ever. It was a sentence phrase in the seventh chapter, just like it was in the eighth chapter of Isaiah. All right, let's read on some more about these Savior verses. All right, reading from the complete Jewish Bible again. Isaiah 49 and 26. I will feed those oppressing you with their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as with wine. Then everyone will know. Hear that? 
everyone will know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Yaakov, the Mighty One of Jacob. Did you hear that? Come, uh, King James Version reads of the same verse. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, Yahweh, there's that uppercase Lord, I, Yahweh, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Complete Jewish Bible, Isaiah 60 and verse 16. You will drink, you keep reading from the Old Testament. What do you think your foundation was from? Where do you think you get the, the Ten Commandments? We're going to throw those out? It's Old Testament. Come on. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were still under the Old Testament, and all of them quoted from the first blood covenant. I don't like to call it old. It's not old. It's still in effect. The only thing that's changed is the priesthood. The only thing that's changed is, this, is, is Yahweh Almighty. He's the blood sacrifice. He is. Isaiah 60 and 16 from the complete Jewish Bible. You will drink the milk of nations. He's speaking this to Israel. You will nurse at royal breasts and know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Yaakov. So you people, you nations who hate Israel, you better watch it. You better weigh your words. I'm not talking about a system of Khazarian mafia and Phoenicians. I'm not talking about a system. I'm talking about Yahweh's Israel. Yahweh promises him, his nation that they're going to drink milk, nurse at royal breasts. And he's going to say, and you're going to know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Yaakov. All right, so uh, I want to look at this word breast. And it means, uh, you know, where it says he's going to suck the milk of the Gentiles and suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that uh, I, Yahweh, am your Savior and Redeemer. Okay, it's, it goes, it's the Hebrew word shod. And it means just what it says. It's the breast of a woman. Nursing. It says the above is the same root word from El Shaddai, which is Shaddad, meaning uh, violent or dis, uh, destroy, uh, devastate, to despoil. He's, he's going to be a devastator. Huh. That's what El Shaddai. El Shaddai. The Hebrew root word is Shaddad, which gets it. Y'all was the spoiler. He's, he's fixing a clean house on the haters of Israel is what he's fixing to do. And look, just because you're not of the 12 tribes, <clears throat> Even if you're a stranger from another nation, <clears throat> excuse me, you can still worship and serve and obey the laws and the commandments of Yahweh Almighty. You don't need to pay somebody to convert you. I don't find that in the scripture. I serve Yahweh Almighty. I keep his commandments by the grace and the mercy of Yahweh Almighty. I've kept his word his commandments, no pagan days for 47 years, not even a birthday. No. The only dates of birth that you find in Scripture were heathen birthdays. John the Baptist got his head cut off at Pharaoh's, uh, at, um, at Herod's birthday, and uh, Pharaoh um, ended up cutting off the head of the baker, hung the, uh, uh, so, and no, he didn't hung it, he hung him. He didn't cut his head off. So we got uh, two birthdays celebrated in Scripture. That gold, frankincense, and myrrh that was brought to Mashiach Yahweh was brought to him in a house. They didn't find him in no manger. That's another lie. Because those wise men didn't find him until two years after he was born. Read Matthew tw uh, chapter 2 and Luke chapter 2. Got a bunch of lies, a bunch of misconstru mis misconstrued stuff. All right, let's go to Isaiah 63 and 7. We're talking about who's our Savior, who's our Redeemer, who's the first and last. It's only Yahweh Almighty. Look, people only know what they've been taught. And a lot of times they get older and they teach what they've been taught without knowledge that they're wrong. And it's not sin to be wrong. It's sin to stay wrong. We have a free will to choose. Yahweh doesn't want robot service. We have a free will to choose. Truth 
is good. I'm not afraid of truth. Error terrifies me. When you find truth, it makes you free. No matter how many is against you. Any old dead fish can swim downstream. But it takes a live fish to fight the currents and the fire and the storms and the rain. Alive in the Ruach HaKodesh. Alive in the Holy Spirit. We got to call out, cry out to one. And we're in some pretty serious times right now. Ladies, moms. You better know who your God is. You might be calling out to a pagan deity and don't even know it. And all you got to do is say, oh, y'all, I'm sorry, I didn't know. You say hallelujah, don't you? You're saying praise Yah. Yah is the short poetic form of Yahweh found in Psalm 68 and 4. Again, mom, keeper of your household, guard of your household, teach your children truth. Truth. All right, Psalm, excuse me, Isaiah 63 and 7. It says, I will recall the grace of Yahweh and the praises of Yahweh because of all that Yahweh has granted us and his great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he bestowed on them in keeping with his mercy, in keeping with the greatness of his grace. This is Isaiah. He didn't lie. He don't mind speaking his name. We shouldn't either. We just don't desecrate it. Isaiah 63 and 8 goes on to read. For he said, They are indeed my people, children who are not disloyal. So he became their Savior. Notice. If we are not disloyal to Yahweh, he'll be our Savior. I don't care what nation you live in. Yahweh is creator of all human flesh. Yahweh is God. Yahweh is Savior. Yahweh is Redeemer. Yahweh is first and last, according to Isaiah 44 and 6. And we're breaking it down in other verses. First blood covenant, and the prophets, and the new blood covenant. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah 14 and 7, complete Jewish Bible. It says, Although our crimes witness against us, take action. Yahweh, for your namesake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against you. You hope of Israel, its savior in time of trouble. Why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Mm -mm -mm. Verse 9 of Jeremiah 14 says, Why should you be as a man, excuse me, I skipped my complete Jewish Bible verse. It says, why should you be like a man in shock, like a champion unable to save? You, Yahweh, are right here with us. We bear your name. Don't leave us. Jeremiah is speaking. He's speaking on behalf of Israel. I'm not talking about Khazarian Phoenician Israel. I'm not talking about system Israel. I'm talking about the Israel that worships Yahweh with a circumcised heart, that obeys his commandments from deep within. Yahweh has them bearing his name. And we, as a nation, the Constitutional Republic of the United States, who has been technically... I'm persuaded, technically, that those 13 colonies were established by Israeli people, again, because of the laws we had. It was against the law to celebrate pagan Christmas, that the name of Yahweh was written on William Bradford's tombstone. He was the second governor for the state of Massachusetts. Our laws were established on the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, <laughs> in the First Blood Covenant. Think, think, think. We cry out to only one. Only one. Hosea, chapter 13, verse 4. Complete Jewish Bible reads, Still, I am Yahweh your God from the land of Egypt, and you don't know any God but me, other than me, any Savior. Did you hear that? 
Yahweh is speaking through Hosea. And he says, I am Yahweh your God from the land of Egypt, and you don't know any God but me other than me, any Savior. Now, they won't say his name because they've been taught that tradition not to say his name. When all the commandment says is don't take his name for nothing. Don't take his name in vain. We can use his name, but we use it righteously. We use it holy. We exalt, exhort his name as God and Messiah. We don't speak his name just, you know, just flippantly. We don't do that. That's wrong. That's taking his name for nothing. We speak his name for truth, to restore his name to his word that humans have removed. Nobody had the right to do that. Reading on. All right, did his name change in the New Blood Covenant? Did it? No. No, it didn't. It did not. Complete Jewish Bible, Hebrews 13 and 6. Everywhere I see the Lord or Adonai or the J or the Shua, I'm going to put Yahweh's name back because Yahweh was manifest in flesh. One name into all nations. One name for salvation, only one. Hebrews 13 and 6 from the Complete Jewish Bible. Therefore we say with confidence, Yahweh is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can a human being do to me? Now, King James reads, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Well, know this. The actual Hebrew script uses the yud heh wal heh And the complete Jewish Bible removed his name and substituted it with uppercase Adonai. So KJV and complete Jewish Bible gave us a lie. It should have read Yahweh. Yahweh is my helper, and I will not fear what man can do unto me. Hebrews 13 and 7. Remember your leaders, those who spoke God's message to you. Reflect on the results of their way of life and imitate their trust. Now, if the blind lead the blind, you're going to fall in the ditch, right? So hopefully, you're not following some kind of leader who teaches you false doctrine. And look, when we first get the Holy Spirit, I'm going to speak for me, okay? When I first got the Holy Spirit nearly 48 years ago, I was in the wrong name, church. I wasn't in an assembly or a congregation. But this particular church taught to keep the dietary laws and absolutely no pagan days. So my children were raised without paganism of any kind. We just didn't know that Yahweh was the name of God that's been removed from his word. So I, I didn't know. I did not know that my God and my Messiah was named Yahweh. But I made a start somewhere. And he filled me with his spirit, with his Ruach. And that Ruach has guided me. But when I saw something or my husband saw something different, the leader of that assembly and other assemblies have either put us out, invited us to leave, gave us gas money to go home, <laughs> whatever. But that's okay. Truth doesn't scare me if you can prove it by Scripture, Hebrew Scripture. Yahweh is my God. Yahweh is my Savior. Yahweh is my Redeemer. Yahweh is my first and last, according to the prophets. And it should have come over in the New Blood Covenant as well. So here we go. Remember your leaders. Hopefully your leaders are not teaching you Shua or Jay. And if they are, you need to direct them back to the scripture. It says, do not be carried away by various strange teachings. That's what the word says. Yahweh is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So don't be carried away by various strange teachings. For what is good is for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods. People who have made these the focus of their lives have not benefited thereby. Lots of truth. Yahweh is the first and last. Our spirit rejoices in Yahweh. For unto us a son is born, and he was given his father's name.
his father's name. There's none other. He was given the name above all names. The name above all names. He's the one to be bowed down to. This is in Phil, in Philippians. We are to bow down to only one. Not Shua and not Jay. We are to bow the knees to Yahweh. <laughs>